Hey everyone, welcome to Cry of Fear Explained. Today we'll be going through the analysis of the character Simon and his influences, as well as all the endings to the game. Simon is a 19-year-old male and the protagonist of Cry of Fear. He is an individual plagued with anxiety and depression, little being known about his school or home life, something his doctor notes are topics Simon refuses to discuss. It is known that Simon lives with his mother, no mention made of a father or other relatives. His only friend outside his home appears to be his friend Sophie, whom he harbours a secret interest in. Before the events of Cry of Fear, as witnessed in the cutscene, Simon was the victim of a hit and run when he was pinned to a building by a car whilst trying to help an injured man late at night. While he surprisingly survived the incident, he was crippled from the waist down and confined to a wheelchair for the rest of his life, subjecting him to further mental trauma that drove him into becoming reclusive and spiteful of his own life. Dr. Purnell was assigned as Simon's psychiatrist following the incident, and he made the decision to recommend Simon try a new form of cognitive therapy. Simon was instructed to write a book on his feelings and emotions to get all the trauma out of his head. Simon was set to work as instructed, and the events of Cry of Fear begin. The events unfolding being a metaphorical depiction of Simon's mind and his battle to purge his inner demons whilst writing. The actions taken during the game show how well the therapy is going. It follows that the Simon played in the course of Cry of Fear is in fact a mental projection of Simon and what combats the trauma inside the real Simon's mind. The fate of both Simons depends on what ending is unlocked due to the player's actions. In the first three endings of the game, Simon commits suicide with slight variation on the fates of the other characters around him. The real Simon ending his own life is shown metaphorically in his mind as a projection Simon is subjected to another nightmare, forced to work his way to the real Simon still stuck in his wheelchair. A fight ensues that ends with the projected Simon mercilessly beating the real Simon unconscious before strangling him to death effectively killing himself in the process and ending the game with one of the first three endings. Ending 1 is unlocked if Simon spared the life of Carcass and refused to show trust in Dr. Purnell in the asylum. The therapy fails outright and Simon develops a deep hatred for the world around him, the book having a negative effect and setting him on the road to self-destruction. In spite of those around him, Simon murders the real Dr. Purnell in his apartment and butchers Sophie, putting her body in his bathtub. He then commits suicide following finishing his book, and his body is discovered by police soon after. In ending 2, Simon spares the life of Carcass, but trusted Dr. Purnell and gave him the gun he requested. In this ending, Simon shows respect for Purnell and his efforts to help Simon, but ultimately believes it was futile, coming to the resolution that his life means nothing now. Due to the guilt caused by his issues with Sophie still existing due to Carcass being left alive, Simon is unable to leave her for someone else to have once he is gone and murders her in his home before committing suicide as the police arrive. Ending 3 is unlocked if Simon killed Carcass but refused to give Dr. Purnell his gun. This is the opposite of the second ending, Simon having murdered Dr. Purnell like in the first ending but sparing Sophie due to the elimination of his guilt and attachment. Simon comes to regard Sophie as the only person who ever truly tried to help him, and in his last statements before shooting himself, Simon requests that whoever reads his book spares her the horror of what happened to him. Ending 4, and arguably the good ending, is unlocked by killing Carcass and trusting Dr. Purnell with the gun. In this ending, Simon did not murder anyone and does not commit suicide, instead being prevented from doing so by a psychosis-induced hallucination where the projected Simon arrives. The real Simon works his way through another nightmare whilst in his wheelchair and engages his mental counterparts in a running gunfight before eventually triumphing and shooting his own nightmarish visage to death, showing that he no longer needs it. The psychosis ends, and it is revealed that Simon did not really shoot his twisted self, but rather two police officers who were entering his room. Doctors testify in courts that Simon was having a psychosis, and although he feels great guilt for killing the officers, he is instead committed to a mental hospital for what is foreseeable to be the rest of his life. Dr. Purnell continues to act as Simon's counsellor and mentor, a service he is grateful for. Sophie regularly visits Simon in the hospital when she is allowed, and although Simon makes note of the fact that she has found a male friend, he wishes her nothing but the best. In the co-op ending of the game, Cry of Fear's storyline is put into question. As the police manage to reach the location where Simon was hit by the car prior to the events of the game, 
just moments before Simon is hit. They arrest the driver and thus prevent Simon ever being crippled, preventing the events of the game entirely. A short scene is then shown of Simon having apparently begun a relationship with Sophie, walking down the sidewalk with her holding hands. Thanks once again for watching guys, be sure to leave any requests in the comments.